Let's play a game of face card poker. The game begins with you being dealt one card face down from a standard deck of playing cards. You get to privately look at what that card is. If it's any kind of face card, be it a jack, queen, or king, it is a winning card. If it's anything else, any card that doesn't have a face, it is a losing card. After you've observed whether you have a winning or losing card, you have a decision to make. You must either bet $2 or $5. Your opponent does not see what you're holding and only sees the bet that you've placed down. And from there, they have to make a decision whether to fold or raise. If they fold, they must pay you an amount of money equal to your bet. If they raise, what happens next depends on the card that you're holding. If you're holding a face card, then your opponent has to pay you double your bet. But if you're holding a non-face card, then you have to pay your opponent double that bet. Here's the puzzle. What should you do in this situation? While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to apply perfect Bayesian equilibrium and pay careful attention to note that what you want to do depends on the card that you're holding. Are you ready for the solution? Part of this question is easy. If you're dealt a face card, your incentives are straightforward. If you bet $2, the best that can possibly happen to you is that you will win $4. And that's assuming that your opponent raises. In contrast, if you bet $5, you are guaranteed to win at least five under the circumstance where your opponent is folding. And it's also possible that you might win $10 if your opponent raises instead. As such, you should always bet that $5 amount and never the $2 amount. You'll always do better with $5 than you will with $2. The more difficult question is how to optimally bluff when you don't have a face card. To begin making progress there, the first thing that you should realize is that if your opponent expects face card holders to always bet $5, and they should for the reasons that we just described, then they will always raise in response to $2 bets. That's because they see a $2 bet as a sign of weakness, and they want to double their money by raising against those non-face cards. Thus, whenever you bet $2 with a non-face card, you are guaranteed to lose $4. That being said, as a non-face card holder, you should not always be betting $5. If you did, your opponent would be tempted to call that bluff with certainty, and as a result, you will ultimately lose $10 after they've raised you. Just look at this from your opponent's perspective. If they anticipated that you were always raising, even if you were holding a losing hand, then they would receive 3 divided by 13 times negative 10 plus 10 divided by 13 times 10 by raising. That's the probability that you're holding a face card times the $10 that they would lose plus the probability that you're holding a non-face card times the $10 that they would win. That's obviously a positive amount, and consequently more than the $5 that they would lose by just folding. However, it's also inadvisable to never bet $5 when you're holding a non-face card. If you did that, your opponent would see a $5 bet as an unambiguous sign of strength 
and choose to fold in response. But then that means you, as a non-face card holder, could bet $5 and win that money, which is better than admitting defeat, betting $2, and ending up losing 4 Thus, you need to fall somewhere in between. That is, some portion of the time you should bet $5, and some portion of the time you should bet 2 the more difficult question is figuring out the exact right balance to strike between those two options. If you want to bluff, your goal should be to make your opponent indifferent between calling a potential bluff and folding. At that point, they will be unsure about what to do and won't be able to exploit you. As such, we need to think about what your opponent's payoffs look like for raising and folding in response to a $5 bet. If they fold, they will just suffer $5 as a loss, guaranteed. If they raise, their payoff depends on their posterior belief that you're holding a face card. Let's call that posterior belief P. Then they will lose $10 P portion of the time and make $10 one minus p portion of the time. In turn, to figure out the belief that your opponent must have to be unsure about what to do, we need to set those two payoffs equal to one another so that your opponent is indifferent. And when we do that, and we solve for p, we get p equal to three-fourths. That is, conditional on observing a $5 bet, if your opponent believes that you're holding a face card 75% of the time, they are indifferent between raising and folding. Of course, you control that belief based on how often you are bluffing with a non-face card. Let's let sigma represent the probability that you are bluffing by raising to $5 when you're holding that non-face card then we can use Bayes' rule to calculate that posterior belief and make it equal to three-fourths. Specifically, the opponent's belief that you are holding a face card conditional on having observed a $5 bet is 3 divided by 13 times 1 divided by 3 divided by 13 times 1 plus 10 divided by 13 times sigma where sigma is that probability that you are bluffing by betting $5 with a non-face card. That's because 3 over 13 is the prior belief that you are holding a face card, based on the fact that there are 12 face cards in the deck out of 52. And if you are holding a face card, you will certainly bet $5. Hence that 1 there. Thus, the numerator is the probability that a face card is betting $5. The denominator is the total probability of a $5 bet coming from either direction, whether it's a face card doing it or a non-face card doing it with probability sigma. The 10 over 13, of course, representing the prior probability that you're holding one of those non-face cards. Well, we can solve for sigma, and if we do that, we have sigma equal to 1 over 10. This tells us if you bet with a non-face card 10% of the time, your opponent will be unsure of what to do, and thus they cannot exploit you. And it's also the answer to the original question of what you should be doing with a non-face card. You may have a lingering question about what your opponent should be doing. So as a bonus question, let's go over that. Your opponent's goal is to prevent exploitation from you when you have a non-face card. Thus, when your opponent sees that $5 bet, they need to try to make you indifferent between betting $2 and betting $5. If they accomplish that, then you cannot exploit them by over-bluffing. Your payoff for placing a $2 bet is to lose $4 because your opponent is always going to raise in response. Meanwhile, 
your payoff for a $5 bet depends on how often your opponent is raising and how often they are folding. If we let sigma represent the probability that they raise, then your payoff for that $5 bet is negative 10 times that sigma portion of the time, plus 5 times 1 minus sigma portion of the time, which of course is the percentage that your opponent is folding. If we set those two things equal to each other, and then solve for sigma, we get sigma equal to 9 fifteenths. In other words, in response to a $5 bet, your opponent should raise 9 fifteenths of the time, and fold 8 fifteenths of the time. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.